Well, we're excited about uh, where we're at and basketball season about to get uh, in the roll. Um, we feel pretty confident about our team right now. Uh, and it's tough being confident this morning because one of our young freshmen went down with a, with an ankle injury, pretty bad ankle injury this morning in one of our early practices. But, uh, you know, the the post position at where she plays is uh, pretty secure when you're looking at Alex and Becca and Gabby and – you know, we've got four or five others that can that can fill in there, Joe. So, you know, it's pretty exciting times to know that uh, your Sunday and it's our first exhibition game give us an idea of where we're at. And then uh, we're about another week or seven or eight days away from playing Vanderbilt there. And that's that's going to be pretty exciting, be pretty exciting for them and us and for our fan bases. And uh, it kind of lets everybody know the basketball season's here. Um, Coach, like you said, you guys start off with Vanderbilt at Vanderbilt. You have a pretty tough non-conference schedule again. <laughs> um, how does that – how do you like um, having a non-conference schedule like that? How is that going to prepare you guys for the Conference USA schedule? Well, I think last year we ended up playing four teams, I think, we looked at that was ranked the top 15 of the country at one time or another last year. Uh, we're looking at it before Christmas. We've got uh, – we're really before the first of the year. We've got uh, – Vanderbilt, we've got Louisville, we've got uh, Ole Miss, we've got Kentucky, we've got Georgia Tech, we've got Tulane, and we've got Southern Cal. So uh, if you look at that schedule, that's, uh, we better have some experience, I can tell you that. But we're excited about it. That's a lot of opportunities there. We go win some of those games, win all those games. It's going to give us a chance to be ranked in the top you know, 15 in the, in the country. And uh, we feel like the, with the young ladies we've got coming back, uh, losing Ty Petty was big. Um, we are hoping that one of our uh, one of our uh, young young ladies that has no experience is going to step up before the first game. And if they do, then uh, we're going to be in pretty good shape. So, but it's a big it's great opportunities for our program. Coach, you just mentioned some of the, the younger players. Um, you have a few freshmen on the roster, or, or anyone just inexperienced-wise, um, who are you maybe expecting to, to have a significant well, impact I, this I'll season? Well, I'll be honest with you, Eric. The, we've, uh, the three freshmen that we've got coming in are pretty good. Uh, Jadonna Davis is 6'5", out of Mississippi. Uh, you know, uh, there were several big-time programs, Mississippi State, Alabama, Ole Miss. Uh, LSU was recruiting her, and we were able to win out on that. Uh, we felt real good about that. Um, Kara Metis was Miss Basketball, single A in the state of Tennessee. Uh, I saw her just dominate with the flight two years ago. She got hurt last year, and uh, a lot of programs kind of backed off of her. We didn't back off, and we were able to beat Ole Miss out on her. She's 6'4", uh, Jadonna 6'5", and we've been needing some size. And then we brought in Anna Jones out of uh, – uh, university school out of Jackson, Tennessee. We felt like we watched her play early in the year at, at, uh, at an event in Louisville, and they had to play her out of position. And I was really impressed with her toughness. Now, if you she walked in here right now, you wouldn't think you wouldn't think she's tough at all, but she's pretty tough. And uh, we got in on her. We was already recruiting her, and felt like she she was a priority. And she's come in. She's I think she's going to get some playing time right off the bat. She might end up starting before it's over with, but. Uh, we're really excited about all three of them, to be honest with you. And then our sophomore class uh, with Kyla Allison, a uh, very talented young lady, just going to be a sophomore. And, you know, it's tough, Division One basketball, to ask someone to step up this early in their career. And we've had to do it at times, but you really want to give them a year or two. And in Kyla's situation, we're trying to fast forward her right now. Uh, Charity Savage is one of the most athletic young ladies we've got on the team. She's 6'1". She came out of Memphis. Uh, just uh, got she's just a, a, a very personable young lady, and we're hoping that before it's all said and done, she's going to play a big role in what happens with this program. And I, I don't know who else. Um, I think those are the only two sophomores that we've got. So, you know, and then uh, uh, Jordan Majors got hurt last year and we were able to redshirt her so she would be with that class. And Jordan, when she got hurt, we had her penciled in as a starter the next game, which was two days, and then she went down with her ACL and she was gone. So she might have been starting before it was all said and done last year. Right now she's putting a push on just like she was doing when she got hurt. So we're pretty excited about that. So our overall team chemistry right now is about as good as since I've been here. Um, 
And uh, they get along well. They're doing well in the classroom. They're doing well on the practice floor. They have great work ethics. Uh, if when you see them on the floor, you're going to see that their 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 bodies have changed. They're more mature. They're stronger. And you know, with the schedule we got, we we pretty much are happy where we're at right now. Health wise, uh, just during the off season, how have uh, all the girls held up, held up? Um... First time we've had an injury this morning. Uh, we've had a lot of minor little things, you know, but this morning it was pretty. Pretty unsettling for the whole team. Uh, if you watch the, the young man that got hurt in the Boston Celtics game the other night, uh, Brandon Hayworth, I think is his name. Well, that's, that's the type of injury it was this morning. But when we got her to the, to the hospital, uh, it was just dislocated. We're hoping now they're saying that if, if there's no other chips or anything like that, she could be back in six to eight weeks. So I'm excited for her and her family because they've kind of been snake bit. And... Uh, and excited for our program for her to get back because I think she was going to get some get some playing time pretty early. Coach, I'm not sure if you can uh, replace the leadership that Ty Petty uh, had, um, but uh, who are you looking to to kind of help offset that void? Well, we've got some. Uh, we've got a group of seniors that I've really grown close to: uh, Abby Sism, Becca Reuter, and uh, Gabby Lines. They played off and on for the last four years, and so our last three years. So they're going to. You're going to see Sism on the floor. You're going to see either Gabby or Becca on the floor. And whichever one comes off the bench, it seems to make our team a little better. So the leadership will kind of lay with them. And then you got A.J. Uh, you know, A.J. is just phenomenal what she's been able to do the last two years. She's undersized. Uh, she didn't have to play that post position in high school. And, you know, she was kind of maybe the, the, the third one down the line on her high school team. And now – you know, she's come into Middle Tennessee, and I think she's stepped her game up. I think all y'all know that. She she very well, she can stay healthy. She very well could overtake Ebony Rowe in the scoring. And uh, I hope she does, because if she does, that means we're going to be pretty successful. But uh, that leadership's going to come from those young ladies. They know what it's, what it's like. Uh, we just looked at a film the other day where uh, – Alex was having to battle those big posts that Florida State had, and she did a pretty good job. I think she ended up with 26, 27 points when she was a freshman. And all last year they had to guard Alex with two and three people at times. So, you know, they know we're going to go to her. And uh, it's going to be up to the likes of the, those other young ladies, Abby and, and Jess and, and uh, Becca and Gabby and them to step up and take the pressure off of her. And if they do that, we're going to be pretty successful. Coach, I know you, you and I have talked about how you guys have a lot of size this season. Um, how is that going to change some things that you guys do um, defensively and offensively? I don't think it's going to change a whole lot early. I think by the time we get to the middle of the conference schedule, you'll see, you'll see us using some of those young ladies. That's one of the ways that she got hurt this morning. We're, we're kind of working with her on contesting shots, uh, hoping that our 6'4s and 6'5s can be shot blockers and have a presence in the center. Uh, we we more or less have been taking charges and still, we hadn't blocked any shots in the last, you know, seven or eight years. So we were hoping that we could we would we could do that. That would help, you know, kind of be a rim protector. And uh, you, I think you'll see a change in that by the middle of the season. Coach, you've been at this a long time. You're a Hall of Famer. Here's another season. How do you continue to drive, oh, go God. for the goal? What gets you going for I each season? I can't wait to get up every morning. It's just not the season. I mean, I've got a, I've got uh, my passion is coaching, and working with these young ladies. And you know, I love everything that I do. I love everything about this situation here, at Middle Tennessee State, and uh, my grandkids, my family, my friends. You know. I couldn't ask for a better situation. And uh, I love getting up every morning, coming in and working. You know, that's what drives me. Coach, um, have you gotten a chance to look around Conference USA as a whole yet? And what are you seeing from the conference so far? Well, I, I think Western's going to be decent. I think Marshall's going to have a pretty good team this year. Western, is, is, I think they're going to end up being picked either one or two with us. Marshall's good. Uh, UAB is going to be pretty good again, and you you look at Rice; they're going not going to be too bad. And you know, a lot of you've got some great coaches in our conference, so I'm sure there'll be a team or two that'll pop up and get hot. We kind of changed the format of our conference, where your better teams are going to be playing the better teams, 
and the teams that are not as good, hoping it'll help our RPI by the end of the year, are going to be kind of playing each other. So you could see a, a shift there a little bit, and you could see some things take place. You might see a team uh, that really gets some momentum going right before you get to the tournaments because of the way the schedule is. Coach, what's the next step for Alex Johnson, and, and how does she compare to some of the greats you've coached here? Well, Alex is not as good a rebounder as, as we would like, and one of the things we've been working on with her, and of course we've kind of had to keep her out of foul trouble also. We don't want her to be as aggressive on going for the, for the rebound because we need her at the end of the game, and she's kind of held back on that a little bit, and that because of the – people that we brought in and because of what Shalon and Tom have done with the post uh, position, we can be more aggressive there. So we're hoping that we can add a few more rebounds in that. Um, she's really, if you, if you, you'll see her up here in a minute, but you won't really get to see her body until she uh, takes her, her coat and things off out here on the gym floor. But I think you're going to see a, uh, an Alex Johnson that you hadn't seen before because she has really put the time in the strength conditioning room. Matt Riley's done a tremendous job, probably the best job that I've had done with our players since I've been here in 12 years. They're stronger, they're quicker, they, they're they're just uh, they they they're in better condition than they've been, and it's all because of the emphasis that Matt and uh, Cassie placed on that back in April, and now we're seeing some of the results of that. But uh, uh, that more than anything. I found it interesting how much you watch the NBA. You mentioned it with Tony. How much can you really draw from an NBA game and put in your playbook? Well, you're, just, you're looking at the movement, you know, spacing, things like that, inbound, sidelines. You know, you know, if all coaches do that. I mean, we. I don't think – you may see some coaches that kind of go through the motions, and there's some of those around. Believe me, there's not any here at Middle Tennessee, Kermit and myself, either one don't go through the motions. We sit down and watch a game. We enjoy watching games. I'm sure he'll tell you the same thing. But we're also looking at something that might help our basketball program. Maybe it's on the floor, on the bench, or whatever. And uh, you, you can't ever get to the point where you, you can't steal something from somebody else that maybe will help you become a better team. But I do. I watch it every night. Love it. Coach, I think you guys have two less conference games this year than – um, you've had in years past. Um, how do you? What kind of differences is that going to? create? Well, we felt like that uh, that that we might help our RPI a little bit. It gave us if you got 14 teams, that's 28 more games inside the conference. And by raising our RPI, up, hopefully, if they'll go out and schedule some people. Now we've gone out and scheduled people. I don't know about the rest of our our teams, but by if they go out and schedule some people, and we win some of those games out of those 28 extra games that we've got then uh, that's going to help our, our conference RPI, which possibly could get us uh, another team or two into the NCAA tournament. And that's what we're all about is trying to get two to three teams in the NCAA tournament. It's one last one from me. Do you still to this day evolve as a coach, change from one season to the next or – you have it down now to what you like to do, and you stick to that. Well, you got you got your baseline. You got what you want to do, and uh, you know I like to press. But the year that I didn't press back, we I think it was maybe five years ago. We rent we ended up number five in the nation in defense, just playing half court defense. So I got to thinking, you know, it's a little bit stupid on my part to keep trying to press with people that really couldn't press as well as we needed to. And here we go, we're able to play half-court D. So, yeah, you, you've got to change. You've got to change to your personnel. You've got to change maybe as how aggressive you want to be. Um, do you want to play any zone, any traps, whatever. You, you know, you, there's always changes that goes on. That really comes in with having a great staff. In my case, I've got uh, four coaches. Um, you got, I've got Tom and Shalon and Kim and Richard. And, of course, Richard's got nothing to do with the day-to-day -day planning of what we're doing strategy-wise. But those other three are, are on it right now. I mean, they're they're prepping down the road all the way to Christmas. So, uh, you know, it's, it's something that, that's just part of the basketball program.